Hello, hello, hello. Welcome to spending quality time with your girl, Apostles It On. Now let's get started. A topic for today is not living a lie. You know, um, like I said, it's, I've made a segment on that already. It's a very huge topic. So today, um, what I'm talking about is going to be not living above our means. You know, because there's a tendency. We live in a world of plenty, and a lot of us do not grow with a lot. So we've come to a world where there's lots of stuff. There's things everywhere, especially here in the U.S. Everywhere you turn, there's stuff. And it's human tendency for you to want the good things of life. So sometimes we work so hard and we want to play hard. So we get the things of life that are good, but sometimes we might not be able to afford it. And we have to stretch in order to maintain those things, even though we finally decided to get them, but we have to maintain them. You know, for example, like the homes that some of us get, sometimes we get very huge, big homes. And initially, when you get them, you're thinking, you know what, this is a piece of cake, I'll be able to do it. But by the time things start falling apart, you have to fix this, you have to maintain this, you have to pay water bill, you have to pay electricity, cable, and all the other luxuries that come with the home. You realize that you're barely cutting even, you know, it's almost like you're living in some kind of a hell. And because we're so worried what people think, and we're so worried to <clears throat> not make people start saying, oh, look at how his or her life has turned into, we are scared to downsize. Human beings, we all make mistakes. It's okay if you realize that you've jumped into a situation that is a little bit uncomfortable for you to say, you know what? I have to be honest to myself. I cannot maintain this no more. I'm downsizing. I'm going to a smaller space that I can manage. I did overestimate my income, so I've realized that this is too much for me. Because the problem that happens is that what if you fall sick? Yeah, you work doubles, you push yourself, you do lots of hours so you can pull the bill. But what if you realize that your health starts failing so you cannot work as many hours as you used to? Or maybe your partner is sick for those who are married. So maybe he's not able to give you or her to give you as much support as they used to give you. What are you going to do? Now you, are fi you find yourself in a binding. And that's why <coughs> here in the U.S. we have a saying that they say that it's like the kids are raising themselves. Because we're not able to be with our kids. We have to run out there to pick up doubles, do a lot of overtime, just to be able to cut even. Just to be able to meet up with our bills. Nobody is making you stuck in a situation that you're not comfortable. Don't worry about society. Society always has an opinion. People always have something to say. So guess what? Do you. Do what you know at the end of the day you can live with yourself. And you're going to be able to say, I'm okay. I have done that in my life so many times. You know, I remember when I just came to this country, we used to live in Silver Spring. I was pregnant. I was going to nursing school. It was hard for me. I had to sit with my husband and say, you know what? We're not going to be living in this beautiful apartment, stretching and just be killing ourselves. We're going to have to move. We had a girlfriend that told us that Baltimore was cheaper. So if we come down to Baltimore, we might have a house that is going to be half the amount that we're paying in Silver Spring. We did not care that we had to leave our friends, family, and other people. Because at the end of the day, it's about you. You're the one struggling. Even if your family or friends help you, it's not going to be every day. You, and sometimes they might even help you and start talking about it and say, look, every month they are coming to us for help. So we had to make that decision and move to Baltimore. Let me tell you, I had to stop my school. I had to be real with myself and focus on what was important, which was my family. And that's what I did. Yeah, a lot of people had a lot to say. I even had to confront one or two people and say, I heard you said this, you said that. But now, where I am, I'm not going to confront nobody. Because guess what? I'm older and more mature to know that it's about me. People always have an opinion. You cannot stop people from having an opinion. And you cannot stop people from talking. You have to do what is going to make you comfortable. Because guess what? Today I can sit here and advise somebody else and say, you know what? I did it and it worked for me. You can do it too. And put your head up and don't feel ashamed. It's your life. You're living for you. You're not living for anyone else. Guess what? If you fall dead today, everybody that's going to come around is going to say, oh, poor thing. I hope he or she lived her life. They're not going to say, oh, I hope she has all the certificates or the degrees or the PhDs to take to the ground. It's good to have those things because it helps you to work less and have a little more. Don't get it wrong. I'm not saying that you shouldn't focus on success. But I'm saying that do not inconvenience yourself to impress others. 
Don't put yourself in a binding, in a bad situation because you worry about what people are going to say. People are always going to say something. It don't matter if you think you're making the best choices. People are always going to have an opinion. And their opinion is not always going to be what you want their opinion to be. So please, 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 my people, let us try to live for us. Let's not worry too much about what people think and live in our own hell. Keeping a huge home that you barely can pay. Keeping a beautiful car that you barely can pay. You know, trying to live a life of luxury when you cannot afford it. And every month you have to be chased by de debt collectors. People calling you here and there. You're not picking up your phone, your phones. You're not opening your mails just because you know the next mail is a bill. The next phone call is somebody harassing you for payments. It is not worth the trouble. Because guess what? At the end of the day, it's going to take you to an early grave. Because you're going to be so worried that you, your blood pressure is going to be up. You're going to de develop gastric, um, uh, gastro issues because you're not eating well. You're always worried. So even when you're eating, your digestion cannot just work as normal as it should because you're not happy. The body is a system. It's a whole. So when one part of that system is broken, the whole is affected. Please, please, please. Today, I just wanted to emphasize on the fact that you don't have to live a lie to impress others. You don't have to worry about the fact that, oh, people are going to say something because I cannot afford what I had and I have to give them back. People will always have something to say. It's about you. Live for you and live for yourself. Don't worry about what people are going to say. They have their own issues. As much as they might be smiling and you think all is good, everybody has something they're dealing with. Be it finances, be it health, family issues, children's struggles, how to raise their kids, whatever. Everybody has something they're going through. It might not be what you are going through, but it doesn't mean that everybody's not dealing with something. Even the richest people in the world, they have their own problems. Nobody is free of troubles. So don't worry about what society has to say. Society is always going to have an opinion. Well, it was nice spending quality time with you all. And bye for now.